just a quick uh, introduction to automotive grade Linux. Um, hopefully most of you are already aware of what it is. Um, but uh, automotive grade Linux is a, uh, an open source project uh, based at the uh, Linux Foundation, hosted by the Linux Foundation, uh, focused on rapid innovation of uh, vehicle software, and that includes vehicle software like the in-vehicle infotainment and instrument cluster systems. And our, our tagline is collaborating to build the car of the future through rapid innovation. Um, <clears throat> we have a total of 11 car manufacturers that support AGL that are members. Um, these include most of the Japanese ecosystem like Toyota and Honda, uh, Mazda, Subaru, um, includes um, US like Ford, includes um, uh, manufacturer in China, uh, SAIC. And then uh, recently we've added um, Mercedes and Volkswagen from uh, Germany, from Europe. So it's a good uh, worldwide set of, a good worldwide ecosystem. Um, and overall we have 155 total member companies including um, a number, a large number of tier one suppliers and uh, tier two suppliers. And those are broken up into uh, platinum, gold, uh, silver and bronze level members. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, Automotive Grade Linux is the only organization addressing uh, Linux in uh, all all uh, different types of ECUs within the car. So, you know, our, our primary focus the first few years of the project were um, was infotainment. Uh, we've been we have a very active uh, instrument cluster expert group right now that's working on bringing uh, an instrument cluster uh, prototype uh, out that some of our members can use in in their vehicles in the next few years. We have a telematics and connectivity profile. Uh, we're involved in ELISA, the uh, embedded Linux in safety applications um, project within the Linux Foundation. And in fact, recently they announced that there's an automotive working group that's going to be, uh, that's starting within, within ELISA. We're also looking at advanced drivers, uh, autom ADAS systems, and eventually building up to um, autonomous driving, although that's that's sometime in the future. Uh, at AGL, we work on something called the uh, unified code base. Um, it's basically we're, we're using a single a single code base, single piece of software or single code, single set of code repositories um, for the entire industry. And we're, you know, obviously to reduce fragmentation throughout the industry. Uh, our goal is to provide uh, at least 70% of the base platform for a uh, production project in whatever of the profiles you, you might see here. Um, we have reference hardware and uh, applications available for adaptation. And really the goal, the, the overarching goal of the unified code base is to co cultivate an ecosystem. Uh, we have you know, developers, suppliers, automotive expertise, everybody contributing to a single code base with all of the various repositories that we uh, that we control. So this is our 2020 schedule. Our um, um, releases are codenamed on, as a fish. We had the Itchy Ice Fish release 9.0 earlier this year. We've already done uh, two patch releases. We have another patch release scheduled for the end of next month. Meanwhile, we're focusing on working on uh, jump, jumping jellyfish, where we are we're moving to the Yocto uh, 3.1 uh, version of Yocto, which is their LTS version. If you saw their earlier presentation on LTS, and then at the end of this year, we'll be releasing the final release for jumping jellyfish is planned for uh, the January timeframe, and then uh, we'll be starting on Kuki Koi. Uh, as we uh, as we continue, as we finish up the jumping jellyfish release, so the AGL architecture is based on the AGL application framework built on top of Yocto. 
Uh, it's a microservices architecture. We have a concept of bindings and binders um, with a whole lot of different uh, services available on top of that. Just, a, I think, a short list of available binders includes uh, home screen, window manager, audio, uh, connectivity, including networking, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, vehicle signaling like CAN, uh, telephony, phone book, uh, location services like GPS and geofencing, along with some reference apps that build on top of these things, uh, like a navigation app. Uh, we've got media player, uh, media scanner using light media scanner. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different binders available and that, that list of binders grows seemingly every month or something new introduced. Uh, in terms of developer resources, all of this will be, uh, all of these slides will be posted on um, um, SCED later on. So you can, you can click on all these links. Um, the uh, developer resources, so we have a getting started guide on our wiki page. Um, we have a documentation site. Uh, you can see there's a getting started guide on the documentation site that allows you to figure out how to get up and running as quickly as possible uh, with your chosen board and how to write applications. We use uh, JIRA for uh, defect tracking and project management. And our, we use we, we capture our test cases in JIRA as well using, um, I think it's Zephyr. Um, you can go get uh, pre-built binaries and source tarballs for all of our releases. Uh, release notes are available, of course, on our wiki. Um, we use Garrett for code review and uh, merging. There's a Git mirror available. And uh, we also offer a um, number of different ways to communicate with the community. So we have a, a weekly developer call on Tuesday mornings. We, uh, you can call in, you can ask questions. Uh, we usually get uh, 20 to 30 people calling into that every week. Um, we use IRC. There's almost always people on IRC on Freenode on hashtag uh, hash automotive. We have a developer uh, mailing list that you can subscribe to. And uh, just wanted to show this. So typically in a typical year, because we're trying to be, again, we're trying to develop a, a community and an ecosystem here, we would get together uh, six or seven times a year, either at AGL all member meetings or events like Embedded Linux Conference, um, or we even host some uh, developer meetups at various uh, companies throughout the world. You can see last year we had a good number of these. Uh, this year, unfortunately, uh, we've had to cancel. We've had to cancel a lot of that because of the coronavirus. Um, but if you are an AGL member, uh, we do have the Berlin All Member Meeting uh, coming up uh, next uh, next month in July, um, and we'll figure out as we go through the year whether we can hold our usual uh, integration sessions as part of uh, the Automotive Linux Summit <clears throat> and uh, CES integration sessions that we would normally have. So um, that's it. It's a, we just wanted to give a really short overview of uh, automotive grade Linux. And um, <clears throat> so uh, I see we do have a question. You do have any questions? Just like I said before, if you have a question, please pop it up, pop it into the questions tab. Um, and, uh, if you can answer the question, if you can answer the question better than I can, then most likely somebody can, you can raise your hand and we can, uh, we can make you a, uh, uh, we can, we can make you, uh, we can activate your microphone and you can give the answer. So, um, <clears throat> the, uh, first question I see here is from, uh, Jesus, uh, it says, would I say that this Linux approach this Linux approach to an AutoSAR similar platform. So I don't know if you're talking about classic AutoSAR or um, I forgot what the new one's called, um, but classic AutoSAR, definitely not. Classic AutoSAR is really dealing with, uh, it's a very closed, it's a very closed system dealing with um, just the low level CAN interfaces um, and messaging through CAN. Um, 
we're higher, we're higher, uh, we're at a higher level than that. And uh, the uh, newer Autosar Adaptive, um, yeah, I would say, I guess it's similar to that, although more more inclusive. Um, I don't know a lot about Autosar Adaptive, given that they're uh, uh, a closed ecosystem. Um, if somebody had something else, uh, some additional, uh, something else they wanted to answer or uh, add to my answer there, you can raise your hand. So another thing we should bring up <clears throat> um, in terms of what we provide on automotive grade Linux. So I, I mentioned we have a, a Garrett system. We use Garrett for code reviews. We have a continuous integration. We have a CI system based on Jenkins with uh, uh, remote test labs and um, using uh, remote boards as well as Q, Q, QEMU. Uh, it looks like I've got a question here. Is there a way to test software without equipment, maybe like demo software? Yes. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. We have we have board support packages for uh, inexpensive boards like uh, Be like BeagleBone Black, especially the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, you can also use Q QEMU, QEMU uh, to test. And then we have uh, every year we have uh, done a or last few years we've done a CES demo using uh, what we call the the green machine, and all that de all those demo applications are available uh, in our Git tree. Um, you'll see if you if you look in our Git tree, you'll see there's um, uh, a set of applications there like uh, uh, multimedia, phone, uh, HVAC. Uh, there's a home screen. Uh, there's a, a navigation app uh, and a, a POI search app. Um, so there's a whole host of applications you can use, including including uh, an Alexa app as well. So we have speech integration there. Um, so hopefully that answered your question, Jamie. So uh, Andrew Murray has a question, and I think Jan Simon could uh, pop raise his hand and maybe answer this one, help me answer this one. Love to get more information on how we do CI testing in QMU and on uh, physical hardware. So we use uh, we use Lava for that, and uh, uh, can you, Kate, can you please um, give, uh, Jan Simon, mic access, please. So uh, Jan Simon is the uh, he runs our continuous integration and automated test um, expert group. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Connection stabilizes. All right. So. Um, yeah, we can actually r run tests on uh, QMU and on physical hardware. This is done by the uh, Lava um, software. So this is a framework that allows you to manage farms of boards, kind of multiple boards of the same type. But Q QMU is basically just yeah a subtype here as well. So uh, when we build a submitted change set in our CI system in Jenkins, the artifacts get published to a web server and the Lava labs get a job submitted and then pull the artifacts, run a series of tests. And that can be QMU, that could be physical hardware. Um, if you are interested in uh, details on Lava, just hit me up on Slack. I can give you some more pointers. Um, but in principle, you can hook up any hardware where you can do power control, serial, and network. Um, so that's the three things you need. And then you can hook that up with Lava.
Okay, so do we let me see. Do you have any other questions? Okay, so we have another question. Um, anybody here specializes in mobile four or five G connectivity in the automotive context? If not, any contact info? So we have. If you go to our the uh, if you go to our Jira page. Um, we have a number of expert groups within AGL, including the connectivity expert group. And the uh, connectivity expert group meets every other Thursday, and they're focusing on um, uh, connectivity, including mobile connectivity. And we have, uh, we have some of that available already in our, uh, in our repositories and uh, in our applications. We, I'd say right now we have a lack of uh, people who are actually working on those modems uh, who've been participating more. We've been more focusing on it from a user perspective. Um, but the telematics use cases, and we have we also have a vehicle, the cloud um, uh, expert group that meets every other Monday. In fact, they met this morning. Um, and they they are also focused on uh, connectivity to the to, to a server back end for uh, vehicle data collection and uh, things like that. But again, so I guess it's it's uh, Claude, I guess it depends on whether you're you're interested in the uh, low level you know interaction with the modem or with more of the high level uh, end to end uh, application type use cases. So, the connectivity expert group is really focused on the lower level stuff, and the vehicle to cloud expert group is more focused on the uh, application level and end to end connectivity with a server. Um, somebody asked if I could click on the uh, answered ones, and I don't see a way to do that. Um, so are you guys using, okay, Zach is, is asked the question. Uh, it's interesting. So Zach is from Cary. I'm from Cary, but I get, I'm guessing you're from Cary, North Carolina. I'm in Cary, Illinois. Um, Zach, are you guys using Smack as our Linux security module? If so, how has your experience been with it? Um, boy, we are using Smack. Um, let me, uh, I'll ask if uh, Scott or Scott Murray or Jan Simon want to talk a little bit more or anybody else about our usage of uh, Smack. But our, uh, all of our, so all of our, our, our uh, minders require uh, Smack. Uh, enablement and um, the, through the application framework, um, I'd say we've run into a few issues, um, but I probably, I have not been directly using that. I think Scott and uh, some other folks have been more direct users of it. And I think the guys who set that up, who work for uh, like Jose, he's probably asleep right now because it's uh, midnight in uh, France. Um, Uh, someone raised their hand. So uh, can we let uh, Scott speak? Hello. Uh, so um, just to comment on Smack, um, the, the usage in uh, you know, usage in AGL isn't particularly complicated compared to some policy setups you could imagine. Uh, basically, every installed app gets its own label, um, so the policies aren't particularly complicated, um, which is sort of similar to the early uh, envisions of how uh, Android SE Linux labeling would work, um, which makes it uh, somewhat straightforward to understand how it works. Uh, but now they're, because Smack doesn't have a really large user community, uh, recently, we've had some issues with things like Pipewire and uh, Wayland because they started to use uh, 
mana fees for things to pass memory buffer handles around. And uh, Smack doesn't really support labeling uh, things that don't have uh, file presence, like they're not in a file system. Uh, so that complicates things a bit. Whereas, uh, as, as I understand, I see Linux has had support added for things like that. So um, it does raise some questions about how future proof Smack's going to be. Um, outside of AGL, probably at this point, Tizen's the only real user of it that I know of. So I think that's it. Does that answer the question? Sorry, I'm muted. I muted myself. Uh, I think so. If there's a follow-up, Zach, please uh, please uh, ask the follow-up in the uh, question area. Uh, Yocto LTS was announced. Which version of Yocto does AGL use, and how long is it maintained? So we uh, are actually, so for um, <laughs> Jumping Jellyfish uh, coming up in, in, uh, in September, uh, we will be using the Yocto LTS version. So our, our next release, the 10.0 release, will use 3.1. Um, and so if you go to our master branch now, that's already running uh, uh, the LTS version. In the past, we have switched Yocto versions once a year in our January release and stuck with it for a year. Our, our tentative plan right now is to stick with the Yocto LTS version through its uh, two-year life cycle. Uh, the commitment from our board vendors who are members of AGL and the boards that we use is that they'll stick with that version and continue to support it. Our understanding from um, uh, the Yocto team is that the non-LTS versions will only be supported for, I think, nine months. So we were using, um, uh, we were thinking about using Zeus rather for the next version, which would have been 3.0, and that's already going out of support from Yocto. So uh, the plan right now is we will stick with the LTS version for the next uh, two years. And I think at that point we'll revisit what we do. Either I, either, LT, either Yocto will declare another LTS or AGL will decide to uh, continue to use that same one depending on what our, um, what our members and what our advisory board uh, wants to do. So I'd say for we're at least two years locked into the LTS version, and that'll be released in uh, with the Jumping Jellyfish in September. Um, next question is from um, uh, Pratik uh, from Hitachi. Is AGL related to CIP? Not really. Um, so it's a completely different project with different goals. Um, they they're more focused on a I think a twenty year use case, um, so we we we're, I, there are some cross members, but um, but uh, nobody's really working on no individuals that I know of are working on both projects. Um, how can someone help start helping the project more beginner oriented? Um, a lot of different ways. So. We uh, obviously download the code, um, play with it, see what works. If you see something that doesn't work, uh, submit submit a fix or submit a bug, a bug report. Um, if you have trouble downloading it and getting it running, uh, certainly the mailing list people are, I think, I think we have a fairly friendly community. Um, the people answer questions on the mailing list. Uh, we also, like I said, we have our developer chat. We have our developer call on Tuesdays, and the uh, IRC channel. Um, if you, it's you know, it's as with any open source project. If there's some something missing and you feel like it, get, it needs to get done, we always accept contributions. Uh, we have some people working on some uh, cloud use cases right now. Um, there's a uh, there's also a list you know a, road, a list of roadmap items that we have on our wiki page, um, and you can just you know drop me a question as well if there's something you uh, um, uh, something else, something you think you might want to work on um, just let me know, um, 
And of course, I mean, I hate to say this, but documentation is always an area we can need, we need help on. Um, so I ask anybody who anybody who's been going through, you know, bringing up the board if they find a problem with the documentation to help, uh, you know, submit updates there as well. It's greatly needed, or greatly greatly needed, or greatly appreciated. Um, so I think we already answered the next question from Claude. Um, has AGL Anthony asks? Has AGL gone through any government slash safety compliance slash certifications? So we are members of uh, the ELISA project that bed Linux and safety applications. Uh, when you think about for automotive, you think about a uh, ISO two six two six two and uh, AC, you know the ASO levels. We're targeting ASO B for our uh, instrument cluster solution. Uh, the instrument cluster expert group is is working uh, very much hand in hand with the Elisa Automotive Working Group that's forming now. We've been very active in their you know existing efforts. So the Elisa the Elisa team has um, people from different certification bodies that are helping us with uh, understanding what issues we need to solve in AGL there. So we have not gone through any of that stuff yet. Um, of course, when it comes to ASIL B or any of those certifications, you get certified at a system level, not just the not just the AGL software itself. So uh, we want to make those artifacts available that a company would need in order to in order to meet those certifications. Um, and that's kind of what the goal of our instrument cluster project is: is to try to figure out what exactly we need to provide. Um, so again, that, if you're interested in that topic. I'd say uh, our instrument cluster expert group is probably the furthest ahead. Um, I'm going to skip to uh, Sumerians. I'm going to say it wrong. Sub Sub Subramanian's question on the bottom because it's easy for me to answer. Where to find the list of eval boards supported by AGL at present? Go to the release notes on the wiki page. And you can also pre-build. Uh, you can also find pre-built binaries for Raspberry Pi four, um, and some other, and a number of other boards there. Um, how mature? Okay, so David is asking, uh, how mature are AGL binders for CAN bus management and data logging? Is it still in development or more production ready? Uh, how mature? So they've been, we've had them available now for a few years. Uh, we use them in our demo. Our green machine has uh, separate boards for instrument cluster and the IVI system with a CAN bus uh, connection between them. We've, um, we have what we call a vehicle signal manager, which allows you to um, create um, abstractions of the messages so the applications don't need to know the exact messages and you can combine fields in the messages and get notifications and things like that and send uh, send messages on the bus um, is anybody is it in product is it it's I would say it's still in development uh, we know there are some issues around production readiness there's a lot of interest around uh, building up that functionality um, so we have a uh, uh, right now, we have a, a member in Germany with the Reutlingen University that's been kind of building up more and more that functionality, uh, creating some uh, tooling around taking um, canoe messages and you know canoe message databases and converting them to the JSON needed for the vehicle signal manager. And um, I think that's that's looking very promising. Um, and Denso 10 has done a lot of work with it, has done a lot of work with the CAN bus as well. But I don't think anybody has put it into production yet. And the, the instrument cluster guys may hopefully will pick that stuff up as well. Um, I hope that answered your question, David. Um, does AGL support OTA over the air updates? Um, we have. Uh, we have support for uh, OS tree. Jan Simon or Scott needs to chip in because I always forget the answer to this. We have okay, so we have the uh, building blocks for OS tree and um, 
uh, Jan Simon uh, raised his hand, so maybe we can promote him as well to uh, speak. Um, and AGL in general is not worried about the end-to-end -end OTA solution. The manufacturers, the OEMs, have said that they'll take care of that. Uh, they'll own the uh, the solution from the server to the uh, to the device. Um, yeah, and Simon, you can speak to what enablers we have on there in there already. Yeah, so uh, the um, uh, OS3 um, over the air update system has been submitted uh, a while ago by ATS, uh, Advanced Telematic Systems. Um, this is based on OS3 and uh, is integrated into the current code base. Uh, there are some board specifics, so not all boards have those enabled, uh, but the usual suspects have. Um, yeah, so you just have to enable the AGL dash SOTA feature and uh, OS3 based support uh, will be there. It's not, it's, it's not hard to try it out. Um, um, there is a, a guide on the wiki um, which should work. It's pretty much fine. Wow, that hurt. Scott, did you want to add anything? I know somebody had asked, I think somebody had asked that question on the, uh, the Slack channel earlier, and Scott was talking about some of the work that Leon did um, with uh, ATS. Uh, so if you go search the Slack channel, I think there's some discussion of that as well. Okay, is there any other questions? Well, this hasn't been quite as uh, interactive as a typical BOF, but I think it's been okay. Just give another minute for anybody who also has a question. Otherwise, I guess we can um, we can end early, or I can sing. And you don't want to hear me sing. Was there something new in the chat? Okay, we do have another question. Does AGL support dynamically installed apps? Um, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know, so I guess I guess I guess it depends on what you mean by dynamic. How dynamic? Um, uh, the short answer is yes, and I think uh, Scott might be able to give a better uh, expand on that a little better than I can. Scott, somebody raised their hand. Oh, there he goes. Um, yeah, uh, for uh, at least in the, the concept of applications built with the application framework, uh, the answer would be yes. Um, but the thing to note is there isn't uh, an app store implementation moment that's been left to the vendors to build themselves. Um, but if you can get the widget file to the board, it can be installed. Uh, and then started, the app can be started by the app framework. So that's, I mean, we regularly use that in testing, so that does work. Yeah. Uh, we have another question from Karthik about, uh, does AGL have an app for Android Auto? No, we do not. So we believe, we be, so the Linux, being a collaborative project for the Linux Foundation, we cannot uh, sign the necessary agreements with uh, Google to uh, support Android Auto out of the box. Um, but we know that some of our tier one suppliers and tier two suppliers have written um, Android Auto uh, on top apps on top of AGL. So we know, we know it can be done. Um, uh, but we we unfortunately do not have the ability to provide that uh, as an application 
uh, from AGL uh, out of the box directly. And the same thing with, with CarPlay, with Apple CarPlay.